You know who it is, the whore flick, digger, ditch, super six, big Mitch. And I'm kicking in doors with all three O's. And I'm bringing 28 101s because we Vegas sons. It's the metal lands. Yeah, you in the metals, man. And you already know what made me. I'm a 530 baby. Boom! Hop a dub! Hop a dub! You already know 22 inch diamond scrub. Nah, I'm just playing. Welcome to Vegas Chronicle with the whole Super Six Big Mitch. Um, I love my intro. I just do. I don't know why. But anyway, welcome to Vegas Chronicles, man. Um, with the whole Super Six Big Mitch. And today, like any other day, y'all know what we do. Come on, man. Quit acting like y'all don't know what we do. We kick action with factuals, right? Right. Um, shout out to everybody that's been supporting my small platform, man. You know, um, I'm going to be doing it in a more professional setting. Y'all already know what I got coming, man. So just be patient with your boy, man. And uh, let me go on and uh, nip this in the bud, man, because we seem to have a computer troll, computer warrior, or whatever you want to call these distractions. But look, dude, and it's this Cali cat. I don't know who this cat is. He hide his face and all this old stuff, but he... Look, this is going to be the last time I respond to you, right? Okay, this probably is as famous as you go get, but I'm, 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 I'm going to give you what you want. Look, dude, I'm not going to disrespect nobody's land, man. I don't do that. Don't have to. But this is what I say. You said that Vegas is, is, is New York, Detroit, California, Chicago's playground, that we don't have no identity, that ooh. Okay, then why you keep coming out here? Okay, and about this being somebody's playground, see, when people came out here and played around, they got laid down. Okay, and of my era, ain't no Cali boy, Chicago boy, or any other cat from any other state ever came out here and took over nothing. But the, and then you said the Backstreets terrorized Vegas boy. Is you, is you crazy, man? The Backstreets came out here and got dealt with. It was a war, man. But what they figured out real, real fast is that they couldn't go to the prisons. See, when they went to the prison system, they was getting done so bad. And then it's the cold part. Couldn't no Cali boys save them. Couldn't nobody save them. Ask the back streets. That's why they back on back street. Because couldn't nobody save them. When you in someone else's state, man, and you think you just going to come out here and just take over something, man, it always end horrible. It's not where you from, it's where you what I keep saying that. Now, most Cali boys I met is A1A. They some cool, solid cats. But you got them other ones here and there that want to put S's on their chest, like I said, and, and either got chased up out of Cali by them S's, or you running from your own hood, and you want to come out here and act tough. Man, gone with that madness. Because when Vegas was out here doing their thing, when Vegas was turned up and they, and they, and they was doing what, when nobody getting in that, when nobody coming out here, participating in that from nowhere. They stood out the way and let Vegas do Vegas. They was over there in Shelter Island, uh, 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 Naked City, um, 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 Sierra Vista, on the outskirts, man. They went in Northtown on the west side with that foolishness. The only ones that did, did that was the back streets. And like I said, it didn't turn out too well for them. They didn't terrorize nothing. The only people that ever terrorized Vegas were people from Vegas. Vegas is the own is its own cause of, of destruction, man. Didn't nobody come out here and tap Vegas? Y'all need to stop that, man. But, you know, if you want to look down on something, do what you do, man. It's all madness to me. I don't compete in stupidity. Who wanna compare self-destruction? Oh, I didn't hurt more of my people than you didn't hurt. Man, come on, man. That don't even make no sense. And, for, and look, I'm trying to stop this madness. So the last thing I'm going to do is go back and forth with a dude, like I say, who probably running from them them, them Sorenos or his own hood. Because them the only ones that are always doing this. Most Cali cats is A1A. They cool, man. And they just look at Vegas as either a, a, another part of California or they just, they just, they respect it. They don't be on no, no, no crash dummy stuff, man. Ain't nobody on that, man. But you had these weirdos that, that want to be known and want to be acknowledged. So I'm acknowledging you now. So this is probably as famous as you go get because I'm acknowledging you. But you know what I'm finna do? Because I'm acknowledging you too much. I'm finna close the book on this because you are a nobody and I'm making you somebody. You see? 
But I'm going to close the book on that and I'm going to move on because most Cali boys, man, I shout out to California. Shout out to the Hood Post, man. Shout out to everybody that's been rocking with me, you know what I'm saying, from California. Shout out to Bobby Ye. Shout out to everybody up out there in California, you know what I'm saying, that's been rocking with me, man. And show Vegas love, man. Vegas and Cali ain't tripping, man. Ain't nobody on that, man. We moving along. Now, another question that was asked of me, you know, it's kind of personal. But, and I had kind of trouble, you know, dealing with this question. But I think it's a reasonable one, and it's one that, that should be addressed because it's a beginning to everything. And people wanted to know what made me, you know, become a person. And my thing is, <clears throat> you know, it's obvious. It's because of who my father was. One thing about my father, you know, I explained this in multiple videos. My father really is the face. He, he, he really is the face, you know, uh, 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 when it comes to this. My, my father. He the one that gave the Stacey McAmoles the hand game. My father. Everybody respect my father. They know my father. He's a legend out here. So when I grew up, it was like it was shoes already laid out for me. You know, my grandmama and I love them, both of them. They tried their best to shield me from that. But my daddy, you know, when I was born, you know, I'm not going to get into that. I love my moms. I'm not going to get into, you know, stuff. Some certain things is not for the internet. But... When I was when I when I when I was coming up, man, my, my daddy had me for the first four years of my life. I was over there on 40 block. You know, my mom and them was in the G's in Garen Circle, 2179. You know, but my father had me. And he he was who he was. So I was growing up kinda, you know, in that life, you know, not asking to be. They was putting ripple in my bottle, white porch, silver satin. Blowing dust in my face, drag racing with me in the car. I was exposed to that as a baby before I knew how to talk. My daddy used to walk around with me on his neck. He used to take me to his fights. I done been in Valley View while he was down there fighting at Doolittle when he was fighting. Every way he went to fight, I used to be with him on his neck or I used to be with, with, his, with his partner. He had a female partner named Tony Girl. And if anybody know about Tony Girl, Tony Girl is... Lil Gus and Big Gus, them older sister, you know. Now, out of their family, she's the one, Tony Girl. Tony Girl probably is the hardest female that ever came up out of Herbert Gerson, hands down. You got your Dana Dane and your Dorothy Ann's and your Girl Bugs and your Treacy's, you know, and your Lisa and your Lady Birds and your Lisa Birds. You got all them, you know, but Tony Girl was on a whole nother level, especially from the shoulders. Tony girl was on a whole nother level, ask anybody. But I was raised up like that, you know. And as I got younger, you know, I mean, hearing about my daddy and all the things he did, being exposed to things that I wasn't supposed to be exposed to at an early age, man, it led me on that path. I didn't have to get jumped on the GPKs. I was born in that stuff, man. Because of who my father was. People didn't give me a name. It was a name already waiting for me when I came when I came up out the cabbage patch. Little sheep dog. That was my name, you know? I didn't ask for that name. That was a name given to me. And it was expectation of me. I was expected to fight and be able to fight good like my father. So imagine the gravitational pull of the streets against what my grandma then was trying to shield me from. When I first went to Juvenile, it was for a beer run. I was 12 years old, man. I was 12 years old when my OGs gave me my first stick. When everybody else was going in the house and going to school, they was going to, they was going to Jim Bridget. Stuff like that. I'm out there smoking water. And people wonder why I was so off. And that was my reputation growing up. People used to start, people used to always call me, you know, they used to always tell me I was off, you know, and I started to believe that and I started acting like that in juvenile. My behavior became so bad when I was going to juvenile. I've been going to juvenile ever since I was 10 years old, man. I want y'all to listen to me. I've been going to juvenile ever since I was 10 years old because I was this man's son. And he was, he was known for being, you know, off with the function, tough, big, and bad. So I tried to imitate him. I'm in juvenile with dudes like Bobby Bailey. I'm in juvenile, you know, 
with dudes, you know, that, that that's that's Ralph McGarver, Cookie from GQ. I'm in juvenile with GQs. I went to juvenile in 1985, man. I was 10 years old. I first went to Nevada Youth Training Center when I was 12. I was the second young, I was the second youngest dude to ever go to that institution. For real. I was 12. I was up there with big guys, man. I was in juvenile with people like Tony Hickman. You know how old they is? I was around dudes like Andre McCurdy, them, GQs. I was a baby in this. I didn't have a, I didn't stand a chance. You know? And, and over the years, my behavior just got worse and worse and worse. You know? I started hanging around Cornbread, one of the worst Gershons, when I was 12. Because I was a little sheepdog. You think he would let anybody else hang with him at that age? And it's a secret that people didn't know. I'm going to tell y'all something people didn't know. This is going to mess a lot of people up. Cornbread didn't even know how old I was until I turned 15. He didn't know that he was hanging with a 12-year-old. Because I started off hanging with Lil Bread. And he didn't think Lil Bread would be hanging with a 12-year-old. See? I was 12. Lil Bread was 16. So Bread thought I was 15, 16 years old too. Because me and Lil Bread was so close. But I was 12. You see? And I'm in a car with these cats. And we rolling around doing things. I'm 12 years old and I'm exposed to this. All of the cats my age, which is which is which is probably wax. They all my age. They all my age. But I I grew up quicker than them, before them. I was doing it since 85. The wax didn't come out to 90, 91. So by the time the wax came out, I was already a known individual. Ain't that crazy? I was banging before that with 40 boys. That's crazy. Before there were 40 boys, I was in the streets. When Buzzo was still a 6-0, I was, I was in them streets. That's crazy, huh? So that's how I got up in it. Because of who my father was. I was allowed to hang with dudes that other individuals wasn't allowed to hang with because of who my father was. Because of who my father was, that let it that they, they gave me an easy path to this madness, man. And I'm not I don't feel good about that. So to you fathers out there that used to be with this, just understand that 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 lane that you made. You need to go back and close it because nine times out of ten. That's where your son go head down if you ain't careful because I did. And my father wasn't here to tell me, no, that ain't the way to go. And I don't think my father would have appreciated if he knew that his little homeboys was giving me water. But hell, he gave it to me too. You know? And... Well, I stayed in the G's. This this is something people don't understand. Well, I stayed in, in Garen Circle. Right next door, I stayed to Morrison. And right across from them stayed Ray, Raymond and Al Williams. That was where all the water was. So I stayed two, two doors down from the water spot. When my daddy went over there and took that shotgun from Chester and bust him over the head with it and whooped him up under the cot, I was a little baby when he did that. You see? Or when the dude drove up on the grass on my father and, and like blocked him in and jumped out the car and point blank rage gave it to my father. My father was trying to block everything with his hands. Dude lit him up. My father done been through a lot, man. And most of the time I was there with him as a baby. So growing up, my mentality was messed up, man. 
I didn't stand a chance, man. And my behavior got bad. It got worse and worse. I was attacking staff in juvenile. Everybody remember what I did to Mr. Jordan. They put me behind devil doors. They started sending me to jail when I was 14 years old. I was no longer allowed in juvenile. I done been in their institutions. Nevada Youth Training Center three times. Tennessee twice. Caliente. They even sent me to the house. Because they really thought something was wrong with me. You see? I changed the juvenile system single-handedly because after the incident with me and Mr. Jordan, because I took my shoelace out my shoe and did that. When I took my shoelace out my shoe and I tried to, you know, Mr. Jordan in Zenoff Hall, I'm the reason why you have to wear orange slippers now because I used the shoelace to do that. So they took our shoes. We used to have to wear their clothes, but they used to let us keep our shoes. But after I did that, they gave us these orange slip-ons. Then I went to court one day, and I tripped out on the judge. And, I, and, and you know, me and my mama got into it, and I'm not going to get into that. But I ended up kicking the table over and stuff like that, tripping out real bad. That's the reason why you got to wear shackles now in juvenile. That started with me. I'm not proud of that, but I did that. And when I got caught with my fifth weapons charge, they certified me. I was 15 years old. They certified me as an adult. Normally, when you get certified in the state of Nevada, you've done something real bad. Like you unalive somebody or you done done something real, real bad. But they did. They, they certified me because of my past behavior and because of my fifth weapon charge. They certified me when I was 15 years old. So I was no longer fit to go to go to juvenile. That's crazy, huh? And Correction Corporation of America, which is where they sent us to Shelby Training Center in Memphis, Tennessee, they denied me my third time. They said, no, we're not going to accept him. So that's how bad my behavior was. So when I speak on this game right here, I want people to listen because I was real knee deep up in this, man. Can you imagine being behind? They had me behind two sets. They called devil doors. They had me behind two sets of devil doors because I was always attacking the staff. And the only people that was behind devil doors like me that couldn't come out was the Donna Streets. Certain ones because they jumped on sticker bush from 6 -0. So they couldn't come out no more. They had them on the same program as me. We was all behind Devil Doors. Me, Lace Dog, Casio, all of us, we was all behind Devil Doors. Every time we went to Juvenile, we couldn't come out. But my behavior was so bad, they didn't want me in Juvenile no more. They sent me to jail. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. That's how bad my behavior came. My behavior became. And I'm not going to blame it on no system because they did everything in their power to try to save me. They didn't just look at me and say, man, he, he too far gone. And I was, but they still tried to the very last minute. I didn't want to be saved. I wanted to be in the streets. I wanted to be big. I wanted to be bad. I wanted to be older than I was. I wanted to be with the big dogs, you know? At least I thought I did until they started giving me big dog time. See, I wasn't getting six months no more. See? Everything changed. It was no more slaps on the wrist. And it's the cold part. After I got certified, I wasn't even out long enough. I got certified, and they gave me a year in the county jail. In the juvenile tank, I had a year in the county jail in 2A. I was on the second floor, 2A. That was a juvenile tank. I'm in there with dudes that got horrible crimes. But I'm in there just because of my behavior, and I got a year in there. And then when I get out of juvenile... There's a truce going on. I don't like it, so I mess it up. So just like I had them wearing slippers in juvenile, just like I had them wearing shackles in juvenile, I messed up the truce. So I'm known for all the wrong things. But yet I'm sitting right here and I'm trying to speak to these youngsters with all my flaws. I know what it's like. 
And the reason why I was so, I felt so connected to that gang life because it was so full of anger. I got to express it. You know, it was like we all was just angry. We were mad for whatever reason. I know I was. I was just angry. And I, you know, I, I, I didn't see myself being anything than what I was. I couldn't imagine myself going to school and actually studying. I can I can actually see myself respecting people. I couldn't. You know, I didn't feel good on the inside. I was doing drugs. I was I was drinking as a as a, as an adolescent. My perception of reality was corrupted from the gate. I was using powerful drugs, hallucinogenics, man, that was that was tearing me up. Over there on 40 block, stretched out. 60s coming through there, tearing it up. You know? Knee deep in that, playing a wrong game as a baby, man. But the scary part is, by the time I turned 14, I was numb to it. Some of my best friends get wet up, be laid out there. You know, just gone. I got used to that. Shouldn't no child be used to that because that's not normal. So what I'm telling y'all is the reason why I got in this game is because the so-called love that the streets and the attention that the streets was giving me was more than I was getting at home. What my grandmama then was trying to do wasn't enough. And I'm not saying they tried. It should have been enough. But what I was dealing with on the streets, it was just so much of it. You know? And the grandmama love, you know, they love you. And they, and they, and they, and they, and they, and they try their best. But can't no, can't no, can't no, can't no elderly, you know, woman keep up with no youngster, man, that don't want to be kept up with. I was out there in them streets with, 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 with everybody else, man. You know, and when I look back on it now, man, uh, you know, all them times my grandmama wanted me to just sit down. When I'm standing there with my curl all messed up, eyes bloodshot red, don't know where I'm at. You know, she just want me to sit down and drink a cold glass of water just to get my senses back. But no, I got to get out here with the homies. And now my now she not here no more, and I miss that. And when I look back on all the destruction I did to myself and I my community, man, that's why that's why I'm sitting here, and I and I think that I'm obligated to tell these youngsters what's really a waste them, man, and that I know how they really feel. See, gang banging is is, is deeper than just gang banging. There's a reason why we gang bang. You know, a lot of us, young black and brown boys, a lot of us are hurting inside. A lot of us are are, are doing what we're doing to replace a void that's in us for whatever reason, because everybody got different stories. You know, I didn't got close with some of my homeboys who were being just like me. You know, I'm not going to get into that, but some of my homeboys was being abused, you know. It was certain things that led them and they felt safe being with the so-called homies. Knowing that they got dudes that will ride with them if they was threatened. Some of them dudes were scared of their fathers. You know, I had a, a childhood friend whose father used to lock him out the house. He was scared of his father. His father used to be on him like it wasn't right. And he used to come over my house crying. I remember he came on my house one time, you know, to, 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 to get a to get a gap for his father. And I had to, you know, talk him down, but it got that bad. But that's the reason why a lot of these dudes turn to gangs is because they find what they think is love in the gang. You know what I'm saying? When they should find genuine love at home. But sometimes it's conflict at home and so much of it, they seem like they find peace in gangs. And that's crazy because gangs don't nothing come with that but war, chaos, and all kind of stuff but people seek that because they can't find peace at home 
That's a trip. You know? And then some people, you know, just they get in it because they from um, they from that area. But a lot of people join gangs because a lot of people, man, I'm telling you, man, it's deep. It's deep. I was mad at my father because people wanted me to be like him and I didn't really know him per se. You know? And I wanted him to come get me. I needed him certain at certain times. And he wasn't there. So I was bitter. You know? And it reflected in my behavior. And I had issues, you know, with, 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 with family members. I'm not going to go there, you know, because like I say, certain things in for the internet. But when it came to gang banging, man, I, I joined the gang because I felt, you know, the gang had what I was lacking at home. They gave me the attention. They told me, they kept reminding me of who I was, even if it was in a negative way. They kept telling me I was like sheep dog. You like sheep dog. Yo daddy this, yo daddy that. They made me feel like I was somebody. You know? And I'm not saying that my grandma them didn't, didn't, didn't make me feel like I was somebody, but it was just a different type of love. You know? But that's why we have to be careful and mindful, man. When you have children, when you have kids, man, and, and, and you have to be mindful, man, that them streets, they don't love no one, but they got a gravitational pull that's unlike anything, man. And you can try your best because I've also had homies who had a good family. You know, had a nice family. They didn't have to do what they was doing, but they chose to do what they was doing. 